lost amid all the hoopla over the XCOM and Syndicate franchises being dusted off was news that a cult favorite first-person shooter called Tribes was being revived as a free-to-play experience. Back in 1998, those who picked it up were given a sneak peek at what would ultimately become the future of the genre. Now, eight years after its last entry, can Tribes Ascend maintain relevancy? Non Suva, step forward and be counted. <laughs> The original Star Siege Tribes was one of the first shooters brave enough to completely ditch the single-player campaign. The same holds true here. While there's a somewhat helpful training regiment, and most are going to need it, there's nothing in the way of a story to play through. You wouldn't be here if you didn't know how to fight, but mastering the air and slope is another matter entirely. Instead, you get four different takes on networked competition. Team Deathmatch has a twist in that there's one flag and whoever possesses it gets a points boost tends to generate plenty of memorable chase sequences across the sprawling maps. There's a 5 on 5 arena option that takes the flag out of the equation and shrinks the map size, but the game's extreme speed simply isn't suited to CQC. There's also capture and hold, and while it's serviceable, comparing it to the equivalent in games like Battlefield 3 reveals its lack of accoutrements. The series has always been, and continues to be, about capture the flag. Few shooters do it better than Tribes Ascend. Our flag is secure. Get the enemy flag! No matter what mode you play, you're constantly earning XP. Tribes Ascend is free to play, so unlocking new classes, weapons, items, and upgrades can be purchased with this in-game currency or with real cash. The game does a good job of giving you just enough for free to get you hooked. If you stick with it for more than a day or two, you'll quickly realize that there are bare minimums to be competitive. Unless you want to spend a month trying to unlock the more powerful weapons, you're going to buy them because the XP prices can be ridiculous. Even so, you can spend $20 to $30 and have as big an arsenal and as many classes as you'll need. If you end up becoming obsessed, this is a small price to pay for dozens of hours of entertainment, and if you spend real money, it increases your ability to build XP through play. Our back A few corners have been cut though. There's no voice chat in the game, instead you get the classic voice commands that work well enough to handle strategy, but keep things from getting personal. There's also no clan support, and dedicated servers are still in formative stages. Matchmaking is also a little rough. Close games are currently few and far between. While the maps are absolutely huge, Tribes Ascend could use a few more. Just recreating some classics would go a long way, as right now there's just one. Still, it's hard to complain with free. And with four modes and the ability to upgrade every class, weapon, ability, and doohickey, there's plenty to convince you to keep coming back. In order to complete this course, you must reach the far end in under 20 seconds. With modes that sound like every other shooter, those who haven't played the old games may be wondering what all the fuss is about. In Tribes, every single player has the ability to fly, and we're not talking about some silly perk or temporary equipment upgrade. It's turned on all the time, and the only limit is your character's boost rating. The entire game has this woven into its fabric. Now any fool can slide down a hill. Skiing is the art of maintaining your momentum from one surface to the next. While there are vehicles in the game of all shapes and sizes, you don't necessarily need them thanks to the ability to ski. Essentially, you hold down the space bar and you're able to slide along the ground and keep momentum. In conjunction with the ability to fly, you can skim your way from one side of the map to the other in short order. Much like motocross, the object is to land on a downslope, slide to the next crest, and then go airborne again. There's a timing and rhythm to it that changes based upon your class, and part of the skill is finding the continuous lines across the map. Combine this with having to manage your boost meter, and it definitely takes some practice and patience. But it also adds a whole new dimension to the first-person shooter. While you can opt for guns that fire in rapid succession, enemies are so fast and well-armored that it's difficult to be effective with them. Instead, the tool of the trade is the spin fuser. This one-shot weapon packs quite a punch, but its reload takes some time. If you want to play the field, mastering these discs of doom is essential to success. The mental faculties required to place one at the feet of an opponent just as he touches down from a long streaking flight are only eclipsed by the sense of accomplishment. If you prefer to hang back and defend, the options are much more extensive. As a heavy armor, you have the mortar cannon capable of wiping out a foe with a single strike. These behemoths come loaded for bear, but they're slow moving and their flight is limited. Medium armor classes are blessed with the ability to deploy remote turrets to help defend the flag or generator. Strategically placing them out of harm's way is an art unto itself. Then there are hybrid classes that are for much more specific use like taking out the enemy's generator using a cloaking device. No matter what type of player you are, there's a role in Tribes Ascend that will resonate with you. 
No matter what class you choose, you'll fail miserably if you do not help in repairing things the enemy destroys. While you can forsake defense for a strong offense in a lot of shooters, you have no chance of winning with that tactic in tribes. Once your generator is taken out, all your defenses break down. This results in a much higher level of clientele. Spammers, campers, and selfish players quickly wash out. As you play each match, you're rewarded with credits that you can spend on what are essentially perks. You can drop a remote inventory station onto your location, or mark an object or enemy on the map for an orbital strike. They're a nice reward in addition to the class building XP, and none of them tend to unbalance each skirmish. While playing a lot of shooters turns into a blur of headshots and exploding hand grenades, every time you play Tribes of Sin, you'll walk away with at least one special moment to remember. It's so fast, so unpredictable, and so demanding that each time out in the field yields something special. It's immensely rewarding and satisfying for those who are willing to learn its intricacies. Vehicles control a little rough and the learning curve is stiff, but it's worth sticking with it. Like most free-to-play games, Tribes Ascend has been built to scale to a wide range of rigs. Cranking up the detail and resolution yield some passable results, but the visuals are not about bleeding edge tech. Speed and scale are its tenets, and with most machines, you'll be able to find a setting that keeps the frame rates high without the game getting ugly. Many of the sound effects from prior games have returned along with the patented voice samples. The music sounds like it was made back in 1998, and its rough implementation is demonstrated by the jarring change of tempo when you grab the flag. It's hard to believe that it's been 14 years since the original Tribes launched, yet despite few changes, Ascend still feels fresh. It's not for players who demand immediate gratification from their games, but those who appreciate the simple pleasure of overcoming challenges within a team environment will find a lot to like. It's deep, customizable, and provides a lot of latitude for different playstyles. With no risk involved, it's worth taking the time to download it and find out if it's right for you. For some, it'll be the best money they didn't spend this year. I knew we were going to win. Good game. Good game. Goodbye. Bye.